in some photos I've seen you you've been sporting a, a dirty Elvis guitar. Uh, yeah. Tell me how you come across uh, that brand and tell me about your guitar. Yeah. So that that after when the album was coming out or when I just started touring, I think, uh, I was just starting to tour it in Australia. Um, Matt, his name's Matt, right? Yeah. Yeah, Matt. Um, I, I, I'm always communicating with him through the Dirty Elvis Instagram, so I never call him by his name. But Matt reached out to me and he was like, hey, I've started building guitars. Oh, this is probably uh, six months before. It was like, could I build you a guitar? And that's the kind of thing you just don't say no to because worst case scenario, you get something that's crap and you politely accept it and then you never use it mm. best case scenario you get something like what happened here where this guitar actually solved a whole lot of problems that i hadn't even really identified yet um so the guitar is i guess it feel wise it's kind of most like kind of a dan electro or something like that where it's it's loud and strummy and because acoustic guitar has been such a staple of my songwriting and of my recording process but i knew i wanted to play electric uh i i hadn't figured out what that looked like exactly and then as soon as matt gave me the dirty elvis i was like wow this works because it like it's plucky enough that it really sounds like it could be a treated acoustic or something, but then you can fuzz it out and do amazing distortions and stuff on it. So it just, it weirdly kind of like opened up. It just was like the perfect guitar. You know how guitars are? They're so, it's such a magical process. I actually had a guitar stolen recently and it's a guitar, it's an SG, a 71 SG that I bought when I was 19 years old. Mm. Um, and the headstock had snapped and it happened once 15 years ago. It happens with SG next because they're so thin. Um, and I had it in the car because I'd taken it somewhere to get it looked at about a repair. And then the car was stolen. <laughs> and it's funny how, yes, there's the tragedy of losing a guitar, but there's also, I always have with guitars, they're like, it's a very cosmic thing, like what brings guitars that you connect with into your life and also what takes them away. And so just coming back to the Dirty Elvis, it just felt like this guitar landing in my hands was like, it was just like the right person for the job. Yeah, um, pretty interesting uh, <clears throat> looking guitar visually as well. Yeah, it's funny. It's like I've shown it to a bunch of people and it's got a real wow factor. Mm. Like I remember like I opened it up and like showed Fred Armis and the guitar. He was like, whoa, when someone says they're building you a guitar, you don't expect that because it's sort of got like a Les Paul kind of body. I mean, it's it's a it's a cool guitar, man. It's a really cool guitar. Yeah. Does a new guitar bring out uh, a rush of creativity? Are, are there immediate melodies in new guitars in general? Um. There can be, there can be. I think for me more with this, it was like, it was just a real, cause I've just been getting so much back into playing electric guitar that it just really was like confirmation. And I think that affected a lot of the new songs I've written um, that are gonna be on the next album. Cause they're all essentially written on, they're either written on electric or on my mate and 12 string that I got when I was in Melbourne a few years back. And that also brought out, you know, 12 string brings out a whole different type of melody and songs. So yeah, I'd say the guitars really do influence you with when you're writing.